Do you ever shrink back from sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? Maybe you assume people just don't want to hear about it. Brother Dan works in the Middle East, where there's outright hostility to Christianity. But he reminds us there are plenty of people longing to hear the truth of the gospel. People are searching for something that will uh, fulfill their deepest desires and needs. I think lots of times we forget that it's not food, it's not entertainment, it's something that's a whole lot deeper than that. And we don't know who it is that's going to receive this, but we know that someone is going to. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome back to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. You know, last week we began learning about the Druze people group. I doubt many of us knew much at all about the Druze people before listening to our conversation last week. We heard about this people group, about a million people living in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Israel. They are not Muslim, although many of them live among Muslims in that region of the world. And many in the Druze community are very hostile to anyone sharing the gospel, encouraging Druze people to follow Jesus Christ. In fact, one of our guests, Brother Hael, grew up in the Druze community. When he came to faith in Jesus, he was completely rejected and ostracized within that community. If you missed any of that conversation, hearing his story, I want to encourage you, go to vomradio.net or find Voice of the Martyrs Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. You'll be encouraged by his story. You'll be encouraged by his faithfulness. He is back with us along with his colleague in ministry, Brother Dan. They create online Bible teaching videos for the Druze people. I asked them, what kind of reception the videos are having? We, we find there's a mixture. And uh, as long as we are preaching the gospel and only the gospel, then what we find are, are that those who are most interested, they are fearful. And they're fearful in that uh, they know that the community is watching them. And so what we see is that uh, there will be people who will, uh, they will like something and we will be able to see who it was that liked it, but then they will remove their like. So you can tell that there's a lot of fear in the community. And so I agree with Hale. I think that the message of the gospel is welcome, but they, they understand their community, they understand the leaders of their community, and they understand how the community works. And because of that uh, intimate understanding of having grown up in it and living in it, they know what will happen if this becomes known. And uh, what has happened with Hale is not a secret. It's it's a very difficult thing. And so we understand that what we are doing is, is we are... We are stepping on toes, not because we we want to uh, make someone mad, but because we are actually providing them with the gospel that will change them. You know, our battles are not against flesh and blood. These are spiritual battles that are being fought. But what we see are the physical manifestations of the spiritual battles that are happening. And, and so what Hale has, has happened to him, that was the physical manifestation of, of it. And so, yes, it was different people who pushed him out of the community. Those were real people, but it's spiritual in its, in its root. When we talk about Christianity, we don't talk about other religion or we say the other religion is not good and, uh, you know, we, we leave everything to leave whatever you want. When we talk, we talk about the Bible only. And, uh, you know, when we talk to somebody, it depends uh, how much you know in the Bible. So if you know a lot, then we know uh, in which stage we cannot talk to him about, on which level. 
And if he doesn't know at all, and then we know how to start talking to him as well, right from the beginning, because the idea that some people having is the wrong idea about uh, Christ as well. So we try to correct them and tell them it's not the truth what you hear. The, the truth is in the Bible. You can take the Bible, which we have a lot, plenty of them, and I uh, give a lot of people as well, that they can read it and they can see the New Testament, what's happening, exactly how we born and where and exactly how things happen. And I think that's a key thing for our listeners to understand. You're not doing a sort of a comparative religion seminar. Mm -hmm. You're just telling people about Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. There have been some times where I thought that I had a, an excellent idea about something and it was going to be a comparison type thing. And so I spent a lot of time putting together the video and the, and, and the content and, and everything. And I remember one time I, I published it and uh, it went live and within five minutes of it's going live. This is one of those things where you wonder if people are actually paying attention, if, if the, if the statistics that you get are actually true or not. And so within five minutes of it's going live, I had already received two nasty grams from elders of the, of the community saying, don't mess with us. And so I quickly removed it because what I recognized was I was making a comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't just focusing on the gospel. And so, uh, it's one of those lessons learned, but, but when you know that people are watching it that closely, it's also really good to know in the Druze community, you have those who are religious and those who aren't religious and the religious only make up, uh, maybe 15% of the total, whereas 85% are not, but that means that both religious and non-religious are, are paying attention. How hard is it for you to find people from within that community to help with these videos? Because a, vi a video is a visual representation of their actual face. How comfortable are they saying, sure, I'll, I'll cooperate with the Christians and make a video? The assets that we use are non-Drew specific. So in other words, we're using generalized uh, video assets that aren't specifically uh, on a particular Druze community. But the, the thing that we have found as being one of the most uh, challenging uh, parts of what we do are uh, having appropriate voiceover actors who do our voiceovers for us. Because even though I can speak Arabic, I don't, I don't speak Arabic as, as a native Arab and certainly not as a Druze. And so we want to have voices that are the kind of voice that the community will listen to and know that it's their voice. And that's been one of the biggest challenges because sometimes our voiceover actors are also, they are threatened. Just for being involved. Like, like they didn't write the script. They're not part of the ministry. They were hired as an actor, right? but still they exactly. face that pushback. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We were in the middle of a, of a series one time and uh, we were asked by the voiceover actor, please uh, remove me from this. I can no longer do it because of the pressure from the community leaders. So how do you, I mean, how do you keep finding people? Obviously the Lord provides, but, but how do you keep finding people who are willing to take that risk? As you say, the Lord will provide. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So um, uh, you know, it's not easy. You have to find uh, someone that uh, actually. Uh, right now, there is one lady that she helping us. She have to be very good also in Arabic language, how to pronounce stuff and how to give the message properly and to read it. Yeah. So uh, we we have somebody. Yeah. Yeah. She do the job very, very well so far. Well, I think one of the things our listeners can do is pray for her protection and, and pray yeah. that she will be able to continue doing yeah. that work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the things I appreciate, but uh, Hale and I, we, we, we work on this as, as a partnership. We cannot do this ministry one without the other. It, it, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work that way. God put us together as a team, and uh, so we operate as a team. 
And uh, one of the things that I appreciate is that Hale knows uh, that I appreciate excellence in what it is that we produce. And Hale appreciates that from my side mm-hmm. because he knows that everything that I'm going to do on my side is also going to be excellent as well. Because when we are proclaiming the gospel, we want it to be excellent for his glory, not for our glory, but so that it can be clear and concise and uh, give give God and Jesus Christ all the glory. Amen. What is the response of the different governments that have Druze people? Because they primarily are not Druze governments, uh, whether it be Israel or Lebanon or Jordan. Some of those, obviously Israel Jewish, others Muslim governments. How do they feel about Christians reaching out to Druze within their borders? Yeah, unfortunately, in the Muslim community, they don't accept that at all. And we have uh, one excellent lady, she's staying in the state, her name Maggie Khuzam, that she have every Saturday night as well. She talk about stuff and uh, she mentioned plenty of time, like uh, in Muslim country, you can't become Christian because they discriminate really. But you can be, if you're Christian, to become a Muslim and they welcome you very easy. In Israel, it's different, and there's not a lot of uh, Muslim people that become Christian. If they do, I think also they do it in secret because uh, they scare from the community as well, the Muslim community. And and Lebanon is its own thing. Lebanon, uh, out of the Levant, is it's is is a, is a different animal. I think about maybe a young person, even this evening, on their phone. They're thumbing through social media and they come across one of your videos. Maybe it's about the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is joy. I don't have joy. I want to, I'm going to watch this video because I don't feel very joyful right now. When you picture that person, what do you think about them or, or what do you see? You know, people are searching for, something that will uh, fulfill their deepest desires and needs. I think lots of times we forget that it's not food, it's not entertainment, it's something that's a whole lot deeper than that. And so when we are publishing these these gospel videos, we know that 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 particular one is going to reach a certain person. It's not going to reach everyone. Uh, just like the gospel does not always reach everyone. It, uh, sometimes uh, you feel like uh, when you are hearing a sermon or a teaching that God is speaking directly to you through that person. Mm-hmm. And we don't know who it is that's going to receive this, but we know that someone is going to. And so what we desire, what we pray for is that is that they will see this and that they will start searching and, and, and seeking God and that when that time comes that they can reach out to us and that we are happy to speak with them. And of course, uh, Hale is the one who does the vast majority of that because he, he's, he is Arab and, uh, it's going to be through, uh, Hale and those that come after him that are going to be able to reach them the most. God has called us to facilitate this. And so that's all, that's what we are. Uh, we're facilitators. And what does that follow-up look like? I would assume that happens through social media as well. It's it's a, a message on social media. Hey, could you tell me more? Hey, could I get a Bible? What are some of those questions or, or some of those follow-ups that you receive? Well, people will ask questions. They'll send us uh, messages. And in the messages, we can start a conversation with them. And then if it reaches a certain point, then Hale will take that and will actually contact them directly. And from there, he will get a feel for where they are. As he spoke before, what do they know if they know anything at all? And he will start discipling them little by little by little because it's not something that happens. If only it happened like uh, Paul on the road to Damascus, if only that were the case, but the reality is, is it's actually much slower. And, uh, you know, the Lord can work as fast or as slow as he wants to. Uh, and so what we know is that you can't push a person to faith. 
that has to come through the way that the Holy Spirit works uh, in them. And so that's one reason why it's so significant uh, that uh, Hale is the one who actually speaks to them directly because he know he, he, he's gone through this before and he, he understands what they're going through. And so he's able to speak to them at that level. Hale, how, how worried are you that someone might come and ask questions and want to know more, but actually they just want to find you and, and punish you? Uh, well, I'm ready for everything, but I think uh, I have also my uh, way and the Lord is with me, so I'm not worried at all. It can happen and it happened before, but the Lord is with me, so he protects me all the time. Amen. Do you have a sense of how many former Druze are now following Jesus? Is there a number that you feel is somewhat accurate? Uh, I think from if we talk about Syria and Lebanon and Israel and Jordan, I think it's a lot. I don't know the number exactly, obviously, but I did see a few people that uh, they follow Jesus, but I don't have a number, obviously. Yet. Okay. Because some of them in secret as well, so you will never know. Right. Yeah, one of the questions that Hale and I have kind of had is uh, uh, how many people we're actually reaching who are already believers, and the content that we're putting out there is also uh, a discipleship kind of content. Mm -hmm. And so we actually found out, I guess about a year ago by accident, that as the person said, there are a lot of us like you but they don't want to associate with us openly. And so we know that they exist in, in, within the communities. We don't know who they are. And so I think that that's a very common thing among the Druze communities, especially. Is there a church, or like gatherings of be Druze believers to worship, to disciple each other, or is that almost impossible within those communities? It's currently almost impossible. Okay, we would love to see a, a church formed of of those who come out of the Druze uh, religion, but right now we know that uh, we are casting a lot of seed, and we are doing a lot of watering and a lot of turning over of rocks and uh, preparing the fields. Uh, the Lord put into our our situation at uh, one time. We lived in a place where we had a, a, a large rock wall between us and our neighbor. And my wife and I had gone to the States and while we were in the States, it rained and it rained and it rained and hail was looking after our, our home while we were gone. And one day we received a call from our next door neighbor and said, the wall has, has collapsed. And, uh, that wall had been uh -oh. there for 40, it had been there for 45 years and it was, it was probably 12 or 15 feet high. So we're not talking about something small. We're talking about something very large. And there's a lot of people who are praying as well, and they are providing uh, a, a prayer coverage and they're fighting battles in the heavenlies. And, and the prayers are like that rain. You don't know which drop it's going to be that's going to have that soil be so saturated and so heavy that it just pushes the wall and, and makes it collapse. We can't tell what's on the other side of that wall, but it's happening. And we know that it's happening because the gospel continues to go forth, the seed continues to be sown, and the water continues to be put down. So it's happening. We just don't know where. I love the analogy of the rain and our prayers, and we have a lot of listeners to Voice of the Martyrs Radio who pray, and so they're going to add to those storms. They're going to add to that rain that's falling. How can we pray? Coach us on specific ways, specific requests that we can pray for the ministry to Drew's people. Well, let me give you a couple of ways that you can be a part of a prayer ministry that has been going on now for f about five years. It's called Pray for Drews, and it's the numeral four in the middle of that. And you can get on Facebook and you can find it on Facebook. And every week there are one or two prayer prompts that, that go out for that. You can also sign up at PrayForDrews.com. And that is another way where you will start receiving uh, information on praying. 
I think one of the main things is uh, I'm reminded of the story about how a, a group of 10 ladies got together and were praying for an African nation back in the 70s, and they didn't know really anything about the nation. They just felt that the Lord wanted them to pray. And after about five years, that nation had gone through a civil war and all this other stuff. But all of a sudden, there was all this, all these people who started becoming believers. That is the kind of thing that prayer does. It's artillery. It's like uh, it, it, it softens up the ground for the incursion of the gospel. Amen. So prayfordrews.com. We will give you a link when you come to vomradio.net. Are there other specific things that we can pray f- maybe for the video ministry, for the social media ministry? What are some ways our listeners can pray? One of the things that I would pray is that the social media ministry would continue unhindered. Uh, we have been uh, very blessed to this point where we have had very few problems within the social media community. But I also know of a lot of people who have ministries very similar to this, and they have received all kinds of pushback and and their accounts have gotten locked. And so uh, I would pray that this continues to remain open so that the gospel can continue going forth. But also for Hale, um, He's been very humble in his description of what he's gone through, but I would pray for him that he would be given strength and courage and uh, provision uh, so that he he can uh, uh, spend the time that he really wants in proclaiming the gospel, because that is his number one uh, goal. Well, I love to be a part of that. I love to tell people what God is doing. Um, Hiel, as as Dan said, I I think you have a little bit undersold the amount of pain that you've had to go through for the sake of the gospel. And we want to honor you. We we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your example to us, your example to the other brothers and sisters around the world. Brother Dan, Brother Heil, thank you for your ministry and, and thank you for being our guest this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. I just want to thank everybody that listened to us. And uh, I encourage everybody I'm sure everybody have the Bible at home, but some of them, they don't open it at all. I really wish that everybody will just open it once and check and see the truth. Amen. Amen. Yes, Todd, I, I just want to thank you all uh, for this opportunity to just tell people what the Lord is doing in this community. If you missed any of today's conversation with Brother Dan and Brother Hale, You can hear the whole program again at vomradio.net or subscribe to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. I want to remind us about an important invitation that we received today, and that is to pray specifically for the ministry to the Druze people. You can get updates on how to pray when you visit the website prayfordruze.com. That's the word pray, the number four, and then Drews is D-R-U-Z-E dot com. You'll also find a link when you visit our website, vomradio.net. They're seeking 20,000 Christians who will commit to pray for the Drews people and for the gospel advance among Drews people. I think it would be great if we had several thousand VOM radio listeners among those 20,000 who are regularly praying for God to move among the Druze people. We always try to equip you to pray. This is a great way to help you pray specifically for the Druze people. Again, that website, pray for the number four Druze, D R U Z E dot com. Pray for Druze dot com. Don't forget, we'll also give you a link at the VOM Radio website, vomradio.net. That's also a valuable resource if you want to get more involved in encouraging persecuted brothers and sisters in hostile and restricted nations. You can listen to all of our previous conversations, more conversations just like this one with Brother Dan and Brother Hale. You can also donate to help make this program possible, and we appreciate when you do that. And you can sign up for the Voice of the Martyrs free monthly magazine. Just click on the free magazine link at the top of the page. I hope that you'll take another step to get involved with our persecuted Christian family around the world at vomradio.net. Then join us again next week. We're going to continue to alert you to the needs among God's people around the world and help you understand how he is at work to spread the gospel 
even in hard places, even in places where it is difficult, it is painful to advance the gospel. I know you'll be encouraged by that conversation. So be back with us next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.